We need to stand together because I'm sick and tired of being afraid. And I know the philosophy of liberty is most consistent. I know it's natural with my being, but I feel like a goddamn pussy for paying the income tax. I feel like a statist-ass bitch for act- asking permission to travel. And I feel like the goddamn government owns all of my property, my vehicle, because of the fucking property tax. So here's my lesson. There's strength in numbers, there's strength in unity, and there's strength in truth. And I know each and every one of you here are down and capable. We have the numbers. I know that we're united. There's, you can't have community without unity, right? And I know that we all fucking stand by the truth. And in order for us to embrace our inherent truth, which is natural freedom, we have to stand up to this. So together, I hope we can make that next step. We can talk about being free all we want, but if we're paying the goddamn income tax, I don't feel very free. If we're asking permission to travel, I don't feel very free. And if we're paying a goddamn tax to own a home, Wind I don't up, feel brother. free. Wind it up. So I'm, I'm calling on every single one of you. It's time that we take that step across the line. It's time that we unite. It's time that we stand strong with our numbers. And it's time we say, fuck the man, because you, goddamn, if I, I'm going to raise my child in the same position as me to be afraid of the fucking government kicking the door down. But I don't want to do it alone, so I need you guys. We need you guys. We need to unite. Woo! Live free. Lower the risk. Fuck the man. Defend each other. Hey, I am, I am so glad. That was really, really good so I can rip on your ass some more. <laughs> I mean, you complain about getting permission for carrying those guns. Did you get permission from Kat? <laughs> oh! <laughs> just, just checking. You have proven yourself to be a man in your own right tonight. No, I really appreciate that. That was, that was really beautiful, but um, I'm, I'm for the status quo, so... That's why I ran I was a little, Yeah, I was a little offended, I gotta be honest. I was a little offended by your rant. Um, no, I think, I think you spoke to something really powerfully about feeling like a statist-ass bitch, and I live in D.C. now because I have to, and I feel like a statist-ass bitch all the time. But when I do, I usually grab, like, my metal portable grinder and grind some boots off of cars, and you know, I, feel, I feel a little more free. I wear, I wear tights with underwear on the outside and a cape while I do it. <laughs> and, and I think if we all stand together in tights, and underwear <laughs> with our grinders and we grind the boots off our cars, we will have the freedom of movement that this man speaks of. Yeah! Yeah, for all that, um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna say that was awesome. I'm gonna give you four and 21 23rds. Ca- oh my God, uh, Carla's gonna be doing the math later. Oh no, I'm so not doing the math. <laughs> Carry the nine. Oh, God. it's oh. not about who votes or scores. It's who counts the votes. Duh. <laughs> There's a lesson in government right here. By the way, <laughs> notice how once again Adam is quoting his Russian masters. <laughs> It is true. I am a CIA plant. I'm just letting you guys know now. Um, John, that was awesome. Um, I have one question, actually. I almost have nothing to say other than my muddled brain is trying to figure out a better mathematical pun than his. And all I have is pie, and I'm like, it's going to crash, which it just did. (laughs) (laughs) 21, 22 over 7, right? Right. Yes. All right. Apple pie, more weed, someone, please. <laughs> and um, I had a question. You actually said the term national freedom. And I don't know if you were just kind of talking or if there's something we need to discuss. What? I, I don't recall using the term. I do not believe in the nation state. It doesn't exist. Okay. A, I think he said That's, natural freedom. Oh, natural oh. freedom. <laughs> Okay, big difference. We don't need to talk. Remember, <laughs> Carla's a foreigner, so her English is a little slow. It's fine. All right. I hear slow, it's true. Well, uh, I thought that was great, John. The, um, i got to be honest with everyone, though, what was coming to my mind. Uh, looking at your facial hair, okay. you kept saying that you feel like a pussy. <laughs> i got to tell you, it's more than a feeling. 
He's hooked on a feeling. A little bit of, a little bit of glue and a little dive, and that's how you got it, right? Anyway. I love you for that. That was pretty good. I got nothing. Come good. on. Is there anybody out there who wasn't thinking at least something similar? Like we all think the like baby's coming out of his mouth or I something? I can't grow a full beard. Yeah. I can grow a Mexican mustache to save Dude. my life. But no, I thought, that was, uh, to that I thought that was great. Look, I mean... Seriously, we, we all have that vulnerability that there's some line for all of us that is really, really tough to cross. And I thought you articulated it beautifully. I thought it was vulnerable, passionate, powerful. I couldn't give you a higher score, so it's five for me. Hey, John, the, the only proper response to that is you are what you eat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, baby. Oh. Thank you, Carla's Adam score. I didn't catch Carla's score. Oh, I gave you the same score as him because he's counting the scores. So. so you got 14 and 19 20 thirds. <laughs> That's very good, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> Break it down for the folks, please, please. <laughs> good. Oh, good. I'm glad that came over. All right. so Emily. Emily. Oh, this professional. Bring it down. Chris, I zoomed up. Sorry, you have not met the height requirements. Next guest. <laughs> <laughs> this is what happens when you're vertically challenged. Tell me about it. I'm going to talk about why some people object to anarchy and how you can answer them. A lot of people object to anarchy because they think that it will result in a takeover of organized crime. So I'd like to give you the top ten reasons why the mafia would be better than the state. Yeah. Yeah. Woo. Reason number ten. The mafia has a sense of honor. <laughs> if they say they'll do something, they do it. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody in the government has a clue what a sense of honor is. If they say they'll do something, you can count it only if you're the one getting screwed. <laughs> Reason number nine, the Mafia Code of Conduct is simple and clear and unfettered by legal doublespeak and millions of regulations. Reason number eight, when competing when competing mafia families go to war, they don't kill thousands of civilians as collateral damage. Yeah. 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 Oh yeah. War is the health of the state, but for the mafia, it's bad for business. Yeah. Reason number seven. Instead of conducting the war on drugs and the American people, the mafia is perfectly happy to peacefully provide high quality products to those who desire them. <laughs> Speaking of! <laughs> Reason yeah, number six when, when you buy protection from the mafia, you get protection. Yeah. <laughs> the mafia limits violent crime in the areas they protect. When you buy protection from the state, you can dial 911 and die. Yeah. Reason number five the mafia's protection is much less expensive than the state's. <laughs> the mafia wants 10 to 15 percent of your profits, and the various levels of government want at least 40 to 50 percent of your profits. Yeah. Reason number four. Unlike the state, the mafia actually wants your business to succeed. They know that ruining your business means that you can't pay for protection. The, the mafia imposes almost no regulatory overhead, nor do they require that you waste your time filling out zillions of self-incriminating tax forms. Yeah! Reason number three. The mafia won't keep you from having a gun to protect yourself and your family. The state prefers that you be disarmed.
The mafia will gladly sell you the means to protect yourself. <laughs> and they won't bother with a Brady check either. Reason number two, the mafia or the state wants to regulate what you do in your bedroom. The mafia not only doesn't want to regulate what you do in your bedroom, they will gladly sell you whatever you need to enhance your enjoyment. <laughs> or whoever. <laughs> and the number one reason why the mafia should replace the state. Members of the mafia have a great sense of style, dress far better than government bureaucrats, and are much easier on the eyes. Yeah. Woo! So there you have it, boys and girls. The next time that somebody argues that anarchy results in an increase in organized crime, smile sweetly and tell that person that it would be a real improvement over the state. Yeah. Yeah. Emily, Emily. So. I have to say is, I think the judges were a little nervous when you walked up here. Maybe we should not even come. Well, if the... Uh... My people, I have if heard If the angry cries. mob could calm down for a moment. Um, I must say that I think I agree with Tony Soprano's mom. I think that... Uh, I think she's done a great job of selling the family business to us. And... Uh, I think uh, it's beautiful. I, I assume that she's the mom of the guy who was in the pinstripe suit. That's, uh, that's great. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't have done it better. And we get some leg. Ladies and gentlemen, I think it's beautiful. I mean, five, you can't do better than that. You just can't do better than that. Thank you. Five. I'm overwhelmed. I have nothing to add. That's a five. Yeah. I feel a little bad for this next person because that's <laughs> tough to talk. Who's uh, next? <laughs> Dave. Dave, are you taller than this? That was great. While we're waiting for him to slowly stroll up here, um, Curtis, Jeez. want me to remind you. Come you on, the grandmother came up quicker. Jeez. <laughs> Don't forget to clean up after yourself. Your mother's not here. Except for Jared and Gary Ian, your mother is here. She can clean up after you. <laughs> hey, that last act was absolutely fantastic, so I say it's a compliment to follow it. Although, definitely makes it a little harder. Hey, everyone outside, if y'all can hear me, great. But I totally would love to invite you to walk closer because I do not have a rant, as I falsified to you. <laughs> I have a report, and I would like to entitle it, The Situation. Mike, The Situation. <laughs> All right. I have a story to tell. I wish I could say that it was fiction, but it is not. It begins with addiction. You see, I have learned you can become addicted to many things, drugs, Sex, money, power. To an addict, how much power is enough? It is never enough. You cannot have much power if you live amongst a free people. To have the most power, you must enslave the people. How? You must make the people dependent on something that only you can provide. And next, there is the money. You see, the people have been duped. After thousands of years, man has learned 
that a currency has four fundamental components. They include